about small topic which is inventory inside a Zabbix. And next Monday, I guess, I hope, if I will have enough time and I should have it, then we'll talk about a Zabbix API, despite I'm not the, let's say, developer type of guy who would write a lot of the scripts, but I will tell you what, what I know about a API, about a Python, and uh, some useful community-made solutions, again, made on uh, these topics that will definitely make your life easier. Uh, before we continue again about uh, inventory today, I wanted to say a huge thanks to all of the supporters, all of the followers, subscribers, whatever else, because... I've watched like 10-15 minutes ago and at that moment we had 191 subscribers, which is extremely cool and uh, yeah, that's awesome. I remember that I published the first video, I think, at the end of the summer last year and uh, then I made just a couple of videos till the end of the year and at that moment we had something around 30 or 40. 40 subscribers and now in one month we added around 150 which is super extremely amazing so thank you guys you are the best and now let's dive in about the Zabbix inventory so uh, the front end front end and CLI we won't need anything else for this task actually uh, the CLI is also optional uh, the version is 4.0.3 but all the things that we will be talking about stay the same in the 3.4 3.2 3.0 I believe there will be the same in 4.2 and uh, well, those are the old versions, but I think they were also the, also the same in uh, 2.4, 2.2, and I guess so also in 2.0. Uh, when you are working in the front end, you know that there are five tabs, monitoring, inventory, reports, configuration, administrations. And uh, we'll be talking about inventory, so we'll kind of need the inventory tab, but this tab is used basically just for the visualization part to visualize already collected and kept inventory about your hosts, about your data sources. The real configuration is happening in, well, actually in two places. First of all, there is a default inventory mode inside a Zabbix, and default is manual. If you will go to the administration, general, and, 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 and other, yeah, there we go. And it's not manual, it's even disabled. So administration general in the dropdown, the other, don't forget that this section is visible just for the super admins inside the front end. There is a parameter called default host inventory mode, which by default, this is a default installation, is disabled. That means that you are not collecting any inventory and, uh, well, seemingly you won't be able to visualize it in, in any other places. But there are two modes from which you can choose, the manual and automatic. Important thing here is that, let's say you have 100 hosts, it was disabled all the time, then you decided to implement the automatic inventory collection inside your monitoring system, you click automatic, update, yeah, configuration updated, but actually if you will proceed to the hosts and click on the inventory tab, it is still disabled. This is uh, a tricky thing, I guess, inside uh, inside a Zabbix front, and so this setting, default host inventory mode, applies only to newly created hosts. It won't change the setting of already created existing hosts inside your front end. If you want to do that, if you have thousands of the hosts and obviously you don't have time and, and resources to manually click over them in the front end and check the inventory mode, you should do that with an API, which by the way again is uh, one of the topics we'll talk about next week. Or you could do that with a database query, the direct query that will update the fields of the hosts. Uh, be careful with that if you don't, let's say if you don't have any experience with a database and you really don't know what you're doing, you're just googling how to do some stuff, be careful, maybe it is worth to google how to use an API, because API 
basically goes through the front end with uh, SQL queries that are developed by developers of the Zabbix team and uh, you can be sure that you won't break anything. But in the SQL, if you will execute some bad queries without select, but let's say uh, update, delete, uh, or even worse, drop, or truncate the table, you can you can find a lot of trouble on your head. So yeah, be careful with that. Okay, let's find out what's the difference between the manual and automatic. Let's start with the manual. It's pretty simple. Manual means manual. Uh, in the configuration hosts, each host that you have will have also a tab called host inventory. It is by default disabled. If you click manual, you have the list of these fields. And uh, by the way, I already know the most important questions about inventory. It's like how can we add new fields or how can we change existing uh, don't leave, wait till the end of the video and I will definitely answer those. So yeah, you will get your answers. The manual mode, you have all the su supplied inventory fields which are available in a default installation of the Zabbix when you just install the server in the front and you already have these. And well, manual means manual, so you just select the field, operating system and write Windows then Let's, I don't know, oops, location, USA, contact, person A, fill in all the required inventory fields, and that's it. Another option is, let's check this one, MySQL monitoring host inventory, again disable it, but automatic. How automatic works? you don't need to manually fill inside the update. So we specified a MySQL monitoring with a, with, a, with, a, with a automatic mode and then you need to go to the items. Each item has a parameter populates host inventory field. And uh, this one as example we can select that the value of this item, DBO, DBC select, second key testing, I'm not sure if it's running, we'll see, will populate the host inventory field operating system, or let's pick the name. And now I will refresh the config, config cache reload, then let's go to the monitoring, no, let's go to the configuration host, MySQL monitoring, host inventory, see, the name is Zabbix administrator and the same Zabbix administrator is actually a value of my DBODB select database monitor item. So as I mentioned, the value of an item is populating the host inventory field and you can see that this value is gathered by this item, this is clickable. You can click on this and you can see the item. So Basically, that means that you should have uh, seamless items on your host, uh, like system system dot host name will give you the host name of the machine. You can create some custom checks, some custom small scripts that will retrieve like uh, software application location. Location might be a bit difficult; will require an integration uh, with with I don't know some GPS stuff. Or, or, I don't know, the notes, the other stuff. So you just specify that some item on the host will populate the host inventory field and select which one. And the received value of that item will indeed populate the host inventory field. Then the visualization part in the inventory overview group, uh, group by name. And we have one host count one with the name Zabbix administrator. It doesn't look pretty uh, since we have just, uh, well, basically two hosts. And uh, on one of them we have a name field, on another one we have an operating system. And another view is hosts, where you can see all of our hosts with a host group and the actual, actual uh, inventory fields 
with a values and also a possibility to search by let's say operating system I just don't remember was it short or full yeah there we go this epic server we can click on it and go to the details and you can see that operating system the full details is windows and the contact is person a and location united states this is the stuff that we filled in uh, manually in the host but again uh automatic is pretty good let me open actually uh paint so what kind of app options we have automatic and manual What's the benefits of each of them? Uh, automatic means that you won't have to, well, click over the front end and specify some fields. You will get the values from the items, from the items, but not all items will retrieve the inventory data like the system CPU load or free disk space, where is the process running or not, doesn't have anything to do with the inventory. So the downside is that you will have to create those custom checks, custom items that will get the inventory data. In the manual, however, you will spend your time to add the information manually in the hosts, but uh, with, in, with a contribution with some other teams or other employees, you can actually get that inventory data without having the custom checks, custom items that will pull it from the hosts. Obviously, if you have thousands of the hosts, you cannot do that manually in the front end, but then that's again a topic for the API. You can use this Abex API, you can use an API call to populate inventory fields, specify which one of the hosts, which hosts using the possible conditions like some host groups or if this host has item like this, then uh, I want to specify inventory field location uh, to United States, else uh, Europe or something like that. That's a separate topic about uh, automation as you mentioned in the comments and an API. Then the most common and popular question about inventory how can i add a new fields of the inventory uh here my sql monitoring host inventory these how can i add a new well with adding a new that's uh, it is possible but it would be definitely rewriting the code in inside the front end and also modifying the database table which is not recommended how can you change the name of existing fields to something else this is a little bit easier and user friendly and without possible bad consequences let's take this one the type Obviously, each of these names is stored somewhere in the front-end files. Front-end file is just the PHP files. Uh, and the value itself is stored inside a database. Database is something you normally don't want to change away from a default in any cases. Why? Because if you don't have a default schema of the database, the next time you will perform a major upgrade, on your Zabbix installation, most likely it will fail. If you don't have any experience in this field, you will don't know what's happened and how to fix it. If you are experienced and you are absolutely friendly with a database's uh, database architectures, schemas, queries, and whatever else, then of course you can modify it. You will know what you did when your upgrade will fail you will see the error message, you will see that the problem is with the database table uh, A and the problem is B, you will fix the problem, upgrade it, again perform changes in the database and continue your uh, monitoring with the custom front and custom fields. But let's stick to how to just change the names. We will need a CLI. A CLI and uh, Location of the Zabbix frontend. If you install the frontend from the packages, it will be user share Zabbix. Then, basically, let's run grep, capital R, and 
typos, typos, and let's search for some field in, I don't know, let's, let's take this one, from your inventory, paste, search here, and we have a lot of outputs, we actually are interested, these are the, these are the language files, so each time you will change the language inside the front end, obviously the name of the inventory will also change, but if you're using an English file, basically we need this, hosts.ing.php. So vim, hosts, dot, not here, uh, it's in the include, hosts.ing.php. And this file contains all the inventory fields with a mapping. The first field title is type. What's the title here? Type. But it is also linked to the database field called type. We can change the title. We can change this to Zabex Cookbook. Save the file refresh the page, host inventory, and there we go, we have a different field. So you are absolutely open to modify the name of the fields, but be careful because I do not recommend to modify the database. And since you don't modify the database, this DB field has some limitation, let's say the size, or it may be text or, or integer or, or whatever else, so you are not able to change this and you are still limited to the database field uh, um, specification, let's call it like that. But in terms of the title, you are free to do whatever you want, right? Whatever you want. Yeah, that's about it. Just... Uh, don't forget that after you will upgrade the front end, not the Zabbix server, but Zabbix dash uh, web dash MySQL or Postgres, uh, then these changes will be gone. So if you need to keep this, uh, probably just make a patch from your modified PHP file uh, com or just save this and compare it with, with the new uh, hosting.php file from the new version of the Zabbix and just make a modifications again. Uh, to be sure that it will function, I, I would not recommend to just copy paste this over a new version because, well, maybe there were some improvements or some changes exactly in this file in Zabbix 4.2 or, or 4.4 or 5 as example. Uh, additionally, we talked about the automatic way, a manual way, a uh, way how you can do that with an API, but don't forget that Zabbix is flexible and open software. It's, it's also an open source. You are not limited to any functionality as soon as, uh, as long as you know how to write a proper script. So it would not be a big problem or an issue for a Zabbix to work with some other tools, let's say some other softwares that are intended just for the inventory collection. You can run those inventory monitoring, inventory collection uh, softwares inside your environment, use a Zabbix API to integrate it with a Zabbix and automatically grab the value of software A and populate the hosts inside a Zabbix frontend with the actual inventory data. Then you can export it, again using API or queries, and uh, yeah, just be in charge with an inventory inside your company. I hope that this was, uh, I hope that this will be uh, at least a little bit valuable for you, and I hope that you did learn something new, especially I hope about those uh, titles and the uh, PHP file. Uh, that's just like a small workaround. And uh, thank you for attention. As usual, click like, click subscribe. Let's get some, some more subscribers, of course. And uh, see you next week when we'll talk about API and, uh, well, we'll figure something else, <laughs> something, something more. But API will come up uh, hopefully in the Monday. Thank you and goodbye.